everybody. And thanks again for joining us here on Expanded Perspectives with me, Cam Hale. And, of course, I'm not alone. The man holding the light, Mr. Kyle Filio. How's it going, everybody? Yes, I'm here in Skeleton Studios. Glad to be back. Yeah. Um, if you've been following this show at all, whether listening to the podcast or on social media and stuff, you kind of know where we've been. Yep. Um, more death Yep. Uh, in the family. Uh, Cam's mother-in-law passed away. And uh, my uncle died of uh, two different things. My uncle passed away from COVID. The coronavirus got him. Uh, I think he was 68 mm -hmm. and uh, did him in. And then, of course, your mother-in-law passed away from multiple things. Yeah, complications with dementia and the, the head injury. Yeah, they're just literally we did the show. We talked about it. You know, that's what we've been dealing with. And then that weekend, that was it. That was the good thing was I was there. The family, we got to go in there and we were there with her. And uh, it didn't take too long. wasn't too terrible. Uh, of course, it's always hard to, to, to see, but it right. was it was I a mean, good thing, you know. It was a good deal, and it's it's done. We've had everything and had all the you know the visitations and all that stuff. He was up there for all that, you know. Went through all that whole deal, but yeah, it was a good thing. And uh, whatever comes next, I'm glad she's not where she was. That's what I'm saying. It's like um, it's terrible when someone passes away, but sometimes. You know, it might be better for her or it that was, person 100%. because she, you know, her 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 lifestyle wasn't a very a pleasant one. No, it and was when, not. When your life becomes like that, yeah, you know, it's almost better. I'm gonna miss her. Well, she was a great one. Yeah, she was a lot of fun. That woman was a great time all the time. One of the sweetest women I've ever met. So yeah, she was a one of a kinder. So I'm gonna I've miss known her. Born her, in forty seven is when she was born. I've known her since probably I was in the seventh grade. Cynthia's mother. Oh yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. I mean. You know, yep. since junior high, you've known her a long so that's, time. Yeah, that's a long time, folks. Yeah, 30 something so, years, right? Yep. So, yep. It was everybody's doing good. Everything's doing yep. all right. My uh, people that have been asking me, thanks for asking. My father is released. He's back at home. The human <sighs> that cockroach. Guy. That guy. Cannot stop him. Uh, he's. I went over his house yesterday, actually, <laughs> me and Luke. And I wasn't over there 10 minutes. My mother was already yelling at him because he was trying to walk around somewhere. <laughs> She's like, Jeffrey. Sit down. You just got home. He's going to have to wear a, You know what? We're going to have to get him a motocross helmet. The full face. He has to have everything. So when he falls, nothing gets hurt. Yeah. I'm, and it's going to have to attach like to his shoulders. It's going to look like Master Blaster. Oh, yeah. You know yeah. what? Where it, it doesn't move. Like the whole... You're going to have to cover him in Nerf. Put pool noodles around him. <clears throat> but... Yeah. He's not going to listen. No, he don't listen just, to anybody. He never has. Never Nothing's going to change. He's very stubborn. But uh, <laughs> put it lightly. <laughs> yeah, the guy continues to move on. So uh, uh, thanks to everyone who's uh, giving me uh, wishes for him and everything like that. But yeah, everything's good. Yeah. Kids are back in school. Your daughter's started college. Yep, she's down there in College Station living her best. She FaceTimes me all the time now. And the whole deal, she's always one of those. We've always been, you know, where we always talk back and forth every day when she was here and even when she's not. So, yeah, she keeps me well updated on everything that's going on. Well, you know, it's a lot easier now with technology compared to like when I left for college. You had to use like a real phone and that was about it. You and had to use pen and paper to, right. because I have a letter you sent me still. I still have the letter you wrote me from when you were in college. <laughs> yeah, right. Because I'm like, this is funny because nobody does this anymore. And think about even long before that, like two or three generations before that, you had to send like Pony Express. Yeah. Or well, you just didn't hear from people for six, eight months to a year. And right? they're like, hey, how you been? When you hear those stories of the, the sailors and stuff that were going to explore the Arctic, and mm -hmm. they're like, well, you know, if we don't hear from you in like four years, we'll send somebody looking. You're like, <laughs> looking yeah. where? You got the whole planet. Yeah. <laughs> we sailed that away. I mean, that is and just. And then we're going to follow the direction they sailed in 36 months if we don't hear back from them. <laughs> right? That's until you run into the ice wall. Oh, oh, oh I forgot about it. Yeah. Oh, here we go. I, I forgot. I, for, I, I caught my... Uh, I you cashed can't my, say that. I cashed my shill check right. last week. <laughs> I got to promote the, the ice wall and the flat earth. <laughs> yeah. There is a, um, a funny documentary on Netflix about flat earthers. Don't get started. No, I'm just saying if anybody out there is interested, you might want to watch it. It's pretty pretty funny entertaining let's say yeah, entertaining. entertaining it is entertaining and i like entertaining and speaking of entertaining some of the most fascinating things that hold my entertainment are listener stories Ooh, mine and too. Uh, we mine got too. a lot of feedback um we got a lot of feedback from fans of the show and then that have been listening to our last couple episodes both here in elite where we were just doing mm -hmm. basically listener stories and i got one that i think you're going to find pretty interesting cam check this out it says hook me up 
Hey, fellas. Been a huge fan for years, and I never miss a show. Thanks. Just heard the latest and the story from the from Charleston. I think this is something you talked about, about the naked monkey feller oh, following yeah. him. This may not be the answer, but there is a little known place in the intercoastal waterways in the area called Morgan's Island. This is also known as Monkey Island, and the island is populated by hundreds of these Rias monkeys. Oh, cool. If you guys ever make it back to South Carolina, I'm a bladesmith in Spartanburg, South Carolina. I was actually on Forged in Fire Season 5, Episode 16. You guys can stop by, and we can make some knives together at the shop. Aaron Trotsky. We'll be there in about four days. So I have not seen that particular <laughs> episode, but how cool is that? Dude, that's awesome. Aaron, thank you so much for sending that in. And uh, yeah, I think I've seen those episodes, but yeah, mess around. We'll be up there. You I, better be careful what you wish for. You turn on a forge and get some anvils and hammers out. Kyle and I appear like cobblers. Right. Well, if you'd like to check out some of Aaron's work, he his, his Noble Savage Forge. Nice. You can just Google that and you can find stuff like that. But uh, that's pretty cool. But uh, So there is a monkey island in South Carolina. With hundreds of monkeys. Who wouldn't? Th- it's like we always laugh about, like the snow monkeys in South Texas. Whenever <laughs> the Nolan Ryan, <laughs> the story? Nolan Ryan story. That's now right. there's some in over oh, man, right? So that's what is up in- with monkeys just being just loose and people because, are like, eh, well, there they go. I can tell you why because these idiots they pets. get these exotic pets and then they can't take care of them. They release them thinking it's not a big deal. I was just watching a show. That's funny you bring this up about they had this this annual python roundup. <clears throat> it's got to be in Florida. Me. It is in Florida. And the top prize is like $30,000. Well, these guys go out, and they have like two weeks, and they try to round up as many of these things as they can. You can't believe how many they're catching. And big. I'm talking 60, 90 pounders. And they had a biologist on there. Jesus. And he said 90% of the raccoons, rabbits, deer are gone. And it's all from them pythons. I heard that the swamp hare that was down there in Florida is completely wiped out. Isn't that crazy? I wonder, you know, we always hear these stories, and of course, there's always elaboration, right? Oh, Mm -hmm. my God, you know, it was huge, and it was this, and we saw all these. But I remember when it first started, we started hearing these stories. You thought it was full of crap. but About those snakes? Well, like the numbers, right? Right. But the number of years it's gone and how fast they reproduce, and there's really no, I guess, natural predator for them at all. I mean, there's, of course, alligators would eat them and maybe hawks or owls when they're smaller. When they're babies, right. But once they get to a certain size, even hogs and all that, once they get to a certain size, nothing's going to eat them. They're not supposed to be in Florida. The the Burmese python's supposed to be in Burma, which is 4,000 miles away. (laughs) That's the reason. It's just so wild. I've heard that there's Nile crocodiles there. Here's, I got a question now. Florida's a wild place. The same thing is happening in the state of Texas with the hogs. Like when I was a kid, you heard about them. Maybe you knew somebody that saw them. Yeah. And now in the same county, there's almost never a time I go where I don't either see one or see proof that one's been there. They're uh, everywhere. And here's what I'm my question yeah. about the, like the Python Roundup. Why are we okay with eradicating and trying to get rid of the evasive species in Florida? But people have a problem and get mad when they see guys in Texas slaughtering all these wild hogs. It's like people get mad. Like you're not supposed to do that. I'm like, yeah. But if you were in New York City and there was a bunch of giant rats, they would want them exterminated, right? Thousands of them. The pigs are no different than rats. They're just 90 pounds, not 10 pounds. Mm -hmm. That's what people don't get is there there are 250 to 300 pound rats is what they are. They're tearing up everything. Millions of dollars. But you know what I mean? Like some people get... some people get mad. I mean, all you have to do is go on YouTube and find one of these videos, a guy shooting them out of helicopters mm-hmm. or thermal vision, thermal scopes, I'm sorry. And I still want to do that. There are people that actually get mad, though. And I'm like, but they don't have any problem with people killing snakes or killing rats. Mm-hmm. What's the difference? Yeah, there's really not one. I guess I know people get upset because they, they don't use the meat of the pigs, as so they, they claim. But I know that a lot of that has changed more and more people. It's funny that you bring this up because I remember in high school wanting to hunt them after you would hear all this. And there was no place close. You had to travel. And like even after we graduated, I would travel two or three hours right? to go on pig hunts because that was where they were at, was out in that area. And now where you and I hunt is literally 15 minutes from the studio. And there's pigs there. You go out there. There's hogs. Y'all saw the pictures on my Instagram where I shot that one. Yeah, I got one last year, too. Yeah. And the same thing can be said for coyotes, Mm -hmm. all these things. I mean. But Florida's a wild place. Man, I've heard that there's not just snakes, but like 
anaconda snakes. I mean, <sighs> uh, Nile crocodiles. I mean, <laughs> so that being said, you. I wonder if they release, and I'm sure one of y'all can tell me. I wonder if, like, <laughs> your grandpa caught a piranha, right? I think so. He had a story. Now, I don't know if it's true. Well, there was yeah. pictures of it in the paper. Oh, uh, was it? There used to be pictures of him with that at the bait shop down here I remember. From us. I know what you're talking about. I but remember I don't know if it was a piranha or if it was a type of piranha. Anyway, what I'm getting at is how long until that's in Florida? And now that's living in the, like, all in the mangroves and all. Where, because that's exactly its life. Like, it's a perfect area for all that to live. Right. I just wonder how far it's going to go. Yeah. Because like you brought up with anacondas. Imagine like a 25 or 30 foot anaconda out there. I bet you there's one out there. Oh, I, I bet you there is. About that. Um, moving on, though, not just with thanks. Uh, check out this listener story. It says, gentlemen, I've been listening to your podcast for about a year now, and I found them to be one of my top three and listen regularly when I drive. Woohoo! Thanks. Right? I currently live in a small town that borders the U.S. Canada border. Oh, nice. I want to share some of my experiences I've had over the years. Watch out for moose. They look very dangerous. (laughs) I like their bacon up there. (laughs) And their maple syrup. Yeah. Don't they get that from mines? They have to work all day in the maple syrup mines in Canada? Yeah, I have a Blue Jays hat on right now. This is true. Every so often I have very vivid dreams. Often these dreams I have could be mundane or intense events that come to pass. Often months will pass when I'll be in the middle of something and realize I remember this. This is much more than a sense of deja vu, as I realized the events were dreamt of, and I can remember being woken up many times by these types of dreams, sometimes a week before or months even, sometimes years in advance. Examples of this happening have been when I served in the Canadian forces, or their version of the army. On numerous occasions, I had dreamt of events or places that I have never been to, only months or years later to be at those places doing exactly what happened in my dream with people I have had not meant at the time during those dreams. And this often gives me that deja vu feeling when I first meet some people as I've had an instance, instant, sorry. What incense? What? An instant sense of familiarity with both locations and people. Now, after the army, I got into law enforcement and this continued to happen. Places and new postings to different towns around the province. This sense has probably on many occasions has helped me when I got into that all too familiar feeling of realization of how a situation situation may escalate. That's what a stroke sounds like. Right? I'm having a hard time talking. <clears throat> <laughs> now, this is obviously not a daily occurrence, as it may only happen once every couple of months, but enough time, uh, enough times over the 20 years to recognize it. But in the last three, I've had an experience that felt much more intense. One night around 2.15 a.m., I swear I heard our front door open and close. I woke instantly, hearing this with anxiety and fight or flight reflexes kicking in, something I know well from deployments to Afghanistan and as a peace officer. I instantly got up. My partner was fast asleep. I went to the front door and turned on the porch light, unlocked the door, and went outside. It was a pitch black night, with dark clouds. It was eerily silent and absolutely no wind. For early September, that seems odd. Anyways, I have learned to trust my instincts and something just felt off about the whole night. It took me an hour before the adrenaline and anxiety subsided for me to calmly dismiss it and justify it was just a dream, something I never really let myself believe. Now more. Recently, three weeks ago, I woke up at 3 a.m., I had a graphic dream involving a possible disaster. This again was extremely graphic and much like previous dreams I've had, I had that certain feeling. But this was something that never happened before. When I looked at my watch, it's a quality watch by the way, but when I looked at my phone, my watch was now 10 minutes behind. The next morning I reset my watch. Three weeks now, it has kept perfect time as it did before my dream. In many paranormal events, time loss is a large part. This is one of that now physical points of evidence I believe I am encountering a real event. I can't explain or identify these events, but a part of me is starting to think I'm somehow not experiencing precognition in a dream state, but possible alternate dimensional viewing, where I am viewing events in alternate timelines 
or only possible events. Is that even possible? I don't know. I wouldn't have thought much more bad on this subject, but the evidence from my wristwatch has me rethinking this over and over. I can tell you my watch is still telling perfect time since I set it back to the right time. Why only my wristwatch? Why a perfect 10 minutes behind in one night? Thank you for telling my story. Tyler Gary. Wowzers. <clears throat> now, that is a bizarre story, but it's not the first time I've heard of that. Now, Tyler, no. I would say thank you for your service, but you're serving Canada. But thank you for serving Canada. <laughs> Here we go. But hey, uh, it, they've got really good snipers. So oh, yeah. No, there's I'm, been several records oh, set sure. by Canadian snipers. Graham Ragsdale, I believe, is one of them. He was a highly decorated marksman. I thought you were talking Canadian about marksman. hockey players who are really good at shooting. Those They, they call them snipers. You know, those lamplighters? Anyway. Anyways. <laughs> Very interesting story. I've, you know, a lot of people, when it comes to the stories of deja vu, mm -hmm. when it comes to stories of time slips, stuff like that, people start wondering, am I somehow, was I in a, an alternate parallel universe that was very similar? And then like that timeline broke off because that's what scientists say is there's like infinite numbers of you doing infinite numbers of thing at the exact same time. Does he, does he say what kind of watch it is? Is it one that you wind yeah, it's a Belova. Okay. Which is like a high dollar watch. Yeah, yeah. So here's here's the take on it. The reason the phone is up to date is because it's digital. It would update no matter what, right? So it's of reading course. that time. But something mechanical caught in that time is going to slow in the reality that it's in. Yeah. You see, that's the difference as it comes off because you can turn your phone off, but the minute you turn it back on, it knows the exact time. Right. It's not like you got to go back and reset it. Everybody knows you don't, it gets its information when the time from a comes master up, spot. When the, when, yeah. the, when the clocks get turned back in a couple of weeks. It'll do the it. The phone does it automatically. Exactly. When your wristwatch, you have to manually yeah. go in. So that's it is the wristwatch is truly keeping the exact time of what you are doing. Yeah, that's in why the thinks, plane that you're on. That's why he thinks he might have slipped into another dimension. There's no reason to think that, Tyler. You did. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. I've had similar things. Like, I remember one time we went to, we were on a hiking trip or somewhere. We were going, it was another state. I'd never been there before. And I was walking through the down a path, and I okay. got to this clearing, mm -hmm. and I knew I'd seen that before. Like, I knew it. I knew exactly what was going to be around the bend. And when I went around the bend, sure enough, it was just like that. He's talking about dreaming of things like that and then it ha happening. I never dreamt Precognition. of Precognition. <clears throat> but I don't know how I knew it. Was it an earlier life? Yeah. What no. was it? Was it an alternate timeline? How could I know? Have you ever had that happen? Was you using your familiar and you was looking through its eyes? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, right. I have had deja vu of, uh, you know, a few times and strange stuff like that happen. But it, it's... It always makes me wonder how often it happens that you don't even pay attention to it, right? Like yeah. you just feel things. I don't know. It's very strange. But that's – there's a ton of stories out there a lot like that of where they have the slip to where a physical – like a physical watch. <clears throat> yeah. That's – it slows because you got to think about what would knock it off. What are you going to asleep? Whatever you're doing, you're wearing your watch. You're moving your arm under your pillow and you pull the stem out. And so it stops keeping time. And then all of a sudden, 10 minutes later, as you roll around, it clicks back in. And that's you, the odds of that happening are slim to none. Right. Yeah. Like the only real explanation is, man, something magnetic happened where you were at to slow that down. Yeah. That's the way it works. Yeah, I think you might it's be right. It's crazy. Okay, I, it's my turn. Mine's not quite as much fun. I did get a lot of stories and a lot of cool stuff, but I got shared a lot of things talking about feral people still. Really? These, look, with the whole Dennis Martin case, it kind of kicked the, the rock over, right? And everything scurried about. And there are a lot of people discussing what they believe to be the feral person or the feral people conspiracy. That they believe there's a whole conspiracy on yeah, it? Yeah. From what I can gather, <clears throat> wow. there are a lot of folks on the board of people that have almost made, if you, I don't really know how to explain, uh, let's say a homeless camp, right? Uh -huh. But a homeless camp deep in the woods. So yeah. imagine. Uh, that's a cool idea. That's what it is, is they have made their own, what is their, uh, uh there's like a lawless town or something in California, you know, where you had to park and walk back in the desert, you know, and it looks all like it's all artistic and all of this. And people have lived there for years, right? Yeah. Well, there are um, several ghost towns that individuals have purchased. Yes. Which I think is cool. Oh, yeah, for sure. So imagine that. But now imagine 
it's way back up in the mountains and you live like we've talked about people finding huts built miles back in the mountains like even in Colorado guys going backpacking on like a mule deer hunt and they come up there and there's like a little hut built like a house Right. Where debris and things have been built to where people, somebody's been living there for an extended amount of time, not just staying there out of the weather. And they are saying that the conspiracy goes that a lot of these people are, you know, on the, the edges of society or just choose to go or could be on the run. And then they may go and raise children and raise a family out there. And then it's just built and built more and more and more as they've walked away. And it gets uh, gets a little fuzzy with what's going on. Okay, talk about feral people, but let's be honest. I mean, you see somebody like we've all seen like the homeless man that may be a little off, and he's got super long, unwashed, unkept hair, and you know it's yeah. all matted and the beard and all that. You would say that's a feral human. Sleepy legs. You saw, he looked feral to no, me. Oh, he did. Yeah, coming by here all the time. Uh, if you saw that in the woods, <clears throat> that's the first thing you would think of, right? Yeah. Listen to this stuff here. I like to picture like. You know, like uh, an abandoned temple in the Maya in the middle of the Amazon, like it's all overgrown, right? Yeah. I like to picture like that kind of, but not a temple, but like some kind of minor shack, but it's all been consumed by the forest and it's overgrown. So it's hard to see you get right there on it. And you're like, what? It makes me think of that clip from uh, Platoon. When Charlie Sheen's character is walking along and he's looking for the, the like the gun nest along the creek. Remember, yeah. and he's like, there's one. He's like, where? And it's like 10 foot from him. Yeah. It's that. That's one of those things. Because you might, what you're describing in the thick, dark woods like that, you may walk by stuff and not really notice it. Right? I mean, it would easily, easily could happen. Listen to this. This comes from Mason County, Kentucky, west of Maysville here on US 68 back in 1980. It says, Mr. Noble Clay, an Alabama truck driver, was hauling steel west on U.S. Route 68 when he saw a figure on the opposite side of the highway. He slowed his vehicle and turned on his high beams, thinking that it was a hitchhiker. As he approached the figure, he was shocked to see an enormous humanoid creature with white hair. What? Yeah. Now he calls the zoo. He gets on this whole thing, says, is there a circus? Maybe there's something that escaped. No. There was nothing. Now, uh, people came forward and was talking about, hey, look, was it a Bigfoot? Was this what you're seeing? All this stuff. He went on file with the police department in his report saying that I have never been into this area before. And I knew nothing about any Bigfoot reports in this area before. I was driving through. This is what I saw. So then other people went to building on that going, well, you said it was, you know, a humanoid creature with white hair and it was big. But. You know, he didn't really elaborate, I guess because of what he saw, maybe he didn't see it long enough, but he didn't really elaborate if it had human features. Jump back still in Kentucky in 85, local residents began reporting a man-like figure around their house prowling through the woods. So it starts circulating through the town area there that it's Bigfoot, right? Right. So the police come out, they go through the whole thing, they look, and they apprehend a local man that was native of Irvin, Kentucky. And he had been on the missing persons list for a little over three years when they caught him out there. He became totally feral. He just went out there and started living. Now, according to the reports, get a load of this. He was naked when they caught him, covered in mud and grass. And they said to the extent that vines and the moss and the lichen was growing in his hair and on parts of his body. They said that his mind was in a complete animal state and he could not, nor would he speak English. And he was fighting the whole way till they took him down. And Have you ever course, been in an animal state before? Uh, <laughs> man, I may have. When I get real hungry, I think I get into an animal state, right? Mm, right. Okay. Again here, Mason County, Kentucky, October 7th, 1980. Charles Fulton and his family were watching TV when they heard a loud noise outside on their front porch. Mr. Fulton said that he heard his son's pet rooster and that it was disturbed. (laughs) So when he peered out the front door, he saw a white hairy creature with pink eyes. And he said, dude, this thing had to be seven foot tall and had to weigh around 400 pounds. He was wringing the rooster's neck and then threw it against the side of the house. And then he took off around the outside edge of the house into a vacant lot. Mr. Fulton says he grabbed his pistol, 
It's a 22. Took off after it, fired at it twice, nothing. They said he believed, this is what he said, that the lights coming from his porch and living room may have frightened the creature, and that's what sent it off on this rampage. But he said that its hair, get a load of this, was real long like a horse's mane, and that he said the creature was very man-like. But white with pink eyes. With pink eyes, an albino Bigfoot. Now, we've heard of white Bigfoot, but an albino Bigfoot is a whole nother level, right? Yeah, that would be super easy to see. Now, again, here's Powell County in Kentucky near the Red River Gorge near Slade. In the spring of 1990, a witness said that they came face to face near Cloud Splitter Rock with an adult Caucasian male walking in the woods naked, covered in mud leaves and vines, and its hair matted and its beard was also matted and had all kinds of like, again, the the moss and whatnot growing in it, but said this, that it almost looked like the swamp thing from the old movie. He said after this thing or this person saw him, the person that reported it, that they stared at each other for a little bit, and then he turned and took off. Now, the person did report this, that it seemed to show extreme intelligence and was very animal-like, but also made no move to contact it and made no move to even follow the, the person that reported this. Well. So some strange feral person activity. I mean, I like the name, the feral people, but I mean, it, it could be just crazy people who've just decided to live in the woods instead of being homeless. But you could be crazy, but you don't have to cover yourself in mud so much so that you're still naked in the woods. Well, the glimmer man's looking for him. You know, you need to put the mud on. That is can't true. See it. Up there, past them trees. When it's you know, using its thermal vision. Man, that is, I don't know what that's crazy. There's a bunch. And look. So I had to contact Lon. Lon's like, dude, I got some. Lon sent me some. There's a bunch of y'all sent stuff from Reddit that I'll get into. Listen to this one here. So Lon says he got this from a very nice person in Tennessee that shared this experience. They called them hillbillies. Yeah, hillbillies. So, let, so the fellow's name's Mike. Said he's from lives near Irwin, Tennessee. It says along with his wife and their dog. Now Mike and the wife have had two encounters with feral wild men. As recent as 2021, April, okay? So So this year. This year. Okay. So his first one goes on. It says, back in June of 2019, he and his wife were both in the living room watching TV together, and it was around 8 o'clock that evening. They were both startled when they saw what they described as a deformed man's face appear in their window. Now Mike's wife literally yells out, of course, like anybody would, a little scream, And then it stared at them and gave, get a load of this, an evil smile before running off into the woods. Now, it says they called the police. The police searched the area and all the tree line. They didn't find anything. Said, but 11 o'clock while in bed, of course, they couldn't sleep. They're laying there talking and they had their gun out. Said they started hearing disturbing laughter from outside the window. The laugh was a lunatic type. So Mike grabs his gun and goes to the door and out to the porch. And that's when he yells, get the hell out of here. And he shot two rounds off into the ground, but he didn't see anybody. You know, not one, but get a load of this. After that, nobody's on the front. Something from outside takes off running around the edge of the house, right? Mm -hmm. Headed towards the brush. Not one thing, but two. Two of them ran off and ran into the woods. Now, he was a little freaked out. So he goes back in, locks the door, goes and gets back in bed. But and I'm sure he probably didn't tell her I saw it too. But apparently they did not sleep that evening. They were on full alert the whole time. Now the following morning, Mike said that the wife usually lets the dogs go outside. Right, everybody does. They can go do their business. They come back in. Says they always return to the front door and they scratch when they're ready to come back in. So they let the dog out. Right. Mm-hmm. They haven't seen it since. The dog took off. They don't know if something grabbed it, whatever. It's not come back yet. Really? Now they go back into saying that- Probably eating it. May have been. Mike's wife had a sighting that said she was returning home from the grocery store and was unloading groceries from her truck when something up in the trees caught her attention. She said what she saw was a deformed man sitting up in the trees, staring at her, grinning wildly. She got back in her truck and left and drove straight to her husband's office. Now, they both don't know what to do. The police are finding nothing and said they feel like they're not being taken seriously. So he's put in several cameras now around the place. But what he described was this. Taller than six foot, thin but very toned body, long dark hair, and on their heads were patches of hair and then throughout their whole body patches of hair. But they have pale gray skin, 
long fingernails, and he said, from what you can tell from the smile, not many teeth, if any, that their eyes are large, wide, and black. He said, honestly, it looks like a mixture between a Bigfoot and a man and a troll. He said the features are very deformed, and he talks about keeping it updated. So they ended up sending in an update. They did locate the dog about a mile or so into the woods, dead. He said, of course, they didn't go into a lot of detail of how bad it was, but they said that they were enough that they could tell what it was. And that the wife does believe that these feral people are responsible for their, their dog's death. Now, they said that they have continued to have sightings, and most of the time they see these things up in trees. Now, it says they have excluded the police because the police don't find anything. And says that they've told Mike that he, uh, his wife and them that they should be uh, likely seeing campers throughout the woods <laughs> moving around. And he stated that she's aware of the times that when the feral men are near because... There's a very distinct odor and that the wife seems to be having more sightings than the husband. So that's not a good thing, <clears throat> but that they believe the feral wild men are more interested in his wife. So it's funny. Get a load of this it says they saw the, the one that they had looking through the window. Yeah. The wife described it as looking like Smeagol from Lord of the Rings. Oh uh, yeah, Gollum. And, yeah, and the way it's got the patchy hair and the way it hangs down and all of this. So they have had some really wild things. And as far as I know, Lon's still looking into this, still waiting to hear from other people or, or back from Mike and his wife about all of that. That's creepy. But I mean, you were just telling a story on the last episode, I believe, where somebody was looking around and they were in the trees and yep. they were on top of the shed. Yep. And, and what's crazy is how closely the story the stories of the of the feral people mirrors that of Sasquatch encounters, looking yes. in through people's windows, having a strong odor. The women usually see them often more times than the men, yep. like when the men leave for work or whatever they make them. I don't know. It's weird. Well, that's what I was going to ask you is I wonder how many times people have just mistaken normal people for Sasquatch sightings at distances, right? I'm sure. Like some, I know that's happened. But how many times have you mistaken a feral person for a Sasquatch and then we're you know our, our people have seen it and goes that Bigfoot oh no that's just a dude out here hiking or that's just a dude out here camping or that you know what I mean is yeah, they don't yeah. report it because it just looks like a person so you're like well I guess because at a distance you may not notice you may just notice the shape and then as it moves off you're just like oh oh that was just a dude out here camping I always think about that when you're like hunting on public land and you're walking in areas that you've never been to you hear about these these drug cartels setting up these illegal grows, yep. and they got guys with armed guards. I mean, they'll kill anybody that gets down there. And they have. I mean, and that's a real threat. You don't have to worry about the Sasquatch. They you have, have to traps. Worry about set boogeyman. Up. Yeah, th yeah. These are real. These are narcos. Yes. Well, I've, I've it, talked. It, it, you do have to always consider that in certain areas where you're actually hunting or, or backpacking or camping or all of that. Is I'm with you. Is what if you stumble across that? Because they don't want you to go back and report it. So, I mean, they'll yeah. just kill you. Be real easy. Well, just like we've talked about, we know someone personally who was told by well, professional guides in Alaska. And I think about be that. Be very when careful it, out there. And some of the modern stories of the David Politis's work where the people go missing had no reason to. Mm -hmm. Maybe they stumbled upon something. And that's what happened. They, I'm sure there's some of those. It has to be where you've come across something like that. It has to be. And that's that's why it's so mysterious. You know, Bob didn't have any, wasn't, no signs of depression or whatever. He was a lifelong hunter, so he wouldn't have been, he's you familiar with the woods. You don't yeah. find the body. He was familiar with the woods, but he walked into somewhere where there was guys growing stuff and they, they yeah. got rid of the body. It's not the woods that kill you. It's what's in the woods that kill you. Right. Speaking of things in the woods that Whoa. could potentially kill you. I love the stories of glowing orbs. Yeah. We've done entire episodes on it. Check this out. This comes from one of our listeners. It says, hey, guys, love the show. Found it a couple of months ago and can't stop listening. Ooh, thanks. I haven't encountered a share that might sound a bit crazy, but I feel that I need to share it. There's a wooded park near my house that overlooks a local lake. It's pretty isolated, and it is used for cross-country skiing in the winter, and the other parts of it are used for trails and such during the summer. When this happened, that's when this part of the story happened, and I and my friends were all going into our senior year of high school and didn't necessarily have the best reasoning when it comes to exploring stuff. We probably shouldn't be. It is a bit of a local, a lot of local folklore in this area for whatever I should call it if that strange stuff happens at this park. 
and a lot of people re report this at night. Now, before going, we had heard stories of satanic rituals, people getting chased out of the woods by men in robes and cloaks. One of my friends that lives near the area said when she was a kid, they found dead cats nailed to trees. Ooh, really messed up things like that. So, naturally, we wanted to go up there and see what we could make happen. We regret doing so now. Now, over that summer, we had gone twice. And to give you a layout of the park, it's on top of a hill with a dirt road that runs about a mile to a mile and a half that goes all the way in with a big loop turnaround at the end. So you have to take the same path going in or out. And the two times before the encounter, we, about five or six of us, I forget, had gone about half the way and decided to walking some of the trails and they ended up at the very end of the road at the turnaround and hadn't really seen anything, nothing happened. It was more of a joke or something to do when we got bored. But the night of our encounter, it was just me and my friend Josh and my friend Joe. Josh was driving, Joe was in the passenger seat, and I was sitting in the back. As we drove in, there was a really bad feeling I had. I had been there and explained that before, but this time it just felt different. About a hundred yards from the turnaround trails, to scare my buddy in the front seat, I rolled down the window and yelled, Hey, come and get us! We drove to the turnaround and parked on the side of the dirt road. But for some reason, none of us were willing to get out. It just had a feeling of doom. That's the best way I know how to describe it. About five minutes later, my friend starts slowly driving around the loop to go back out, and he looks over into the woods, which is all uphill for a good ways, and says, Hey, you guys see that light up there? I and my other buddy thought he was just kidding around at first, but we looked and realized there was a bright blue light about 150 yards uphill in the woods. This is where it gets really weird. My friend that was driving had no reaction. I and the what buddy... What you just said is one of the... Oh, that was the wrong one. I missed it all up. I was going to play the bright light when... Oh, man. <laughs> well, you'll get your chance in a second. If I can find it. <laughs> I and the buddy in the passenger seat started yelling at him to drive, but he sort of wasn't even reacting. Probably just his reaction to fear. But by the time we yelled at him to hit the gas enough, we were going around the loop about to merge back out onto the road, the road that goes out. The lights had covered the distance and broke out into the grass between the road and the trees, which is only about 50 yards. When the light was in the woods, it appeared to be one ball. But when it came into the grass, it was actually four evenly spaced balls of light. The first two, about three feet off the ground, and the second two about 10 feet in a square formation. At first, I was thinking it was a truck or perhaps a dirt bike or something rational. But for a second, the car headlights hit the orbs and there was nothing there but the balls of light. We ended speeding up 50 to 60 miles an hour out and the orbs, whatever they were, kept up with the car until they just stopped chasing us like three quarters of the way out. I honestly do not know what this was. The balls of light didn't shine like a flashlight. It was bright, but not projecting light, if that makes any sense. It, it's also an area, the Finger Lakes, where this is a lot of, where there is a lot of Native American history. And I don't know a ton on the topic, but that could be connected. If you want to see the location, it's Harriet Hollister Spencer Recreation Center, on Google Earth. That was a very long-winded story, I know. It sounds absurd, but I really don't know how else to put it. Back since it happened, I've told people and caught some jokes for it and the usual people saying I'm crazy and I stand by it because I didn't think anything like that was even possible until it happened to me. I grew up in the woods. I've been hunting and fishing since I can remember and there really isn't much in upstate New York that I haven't encountered in the woods, but I know this wasn't natural. Joe Harvey. Well, thanks, Joe. Wow. It's not the first time I've heard of orbs chasing a car, following a car, keeping up with pay, uh, the pace of a vehicle, splitting into multiple balls of light. You know, we've often talked about one possible theory are these orbs are perhaps like drones. Mm -hmm. Like if you're a UFO and you're hovering, say, above the clouds, and you want to send a, a, something to, the much smaller to peek and peer around, wouldn't you send an, uh, a drone? I mean, we humans use drones. 
Maybe it's a drone. Maybe it's a UFO. Maybe they're tiny. Maybe the aliens inside are no bigger than like a Lego person. We always assume everything's giant, right? Or maybe it's an, a whole different species. Like it truly is an alien species of some sort of light beings that live in the woods. That's true. Because there are stories going way back with these fae stories. Mm-hmm. It always talks about balls of light. So it could easily be a fae thing. Could be a fae thing. Could the fae and the extraterrestrials be the same thing? Because there's a lot of, there's a crossover. There's a gray area. Pardon the pun with the gray. <laughs> But there are, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of stories that in ancient times were perceived as fae. Yeah. But in modern times, if you told the same story, it would be perceived as an extraterrestrial event. But are the two perhaps linked? Maybe there's a fae ET war going on. Maybe for whatever reason, aliens take on the shape of a gnome. True. Who's to say that there's another planet in another galaxy or another parallel dimension, and the aliens look like gnomes. The Here we go. People see them is because on their planet, that's it's inhabited by gnomes. They all have hats, maybe vests, so. play little instruments, smoke pipes. Or maybe they're really not from another planet. They're from another like plane of existence. Could be. The, the, the orb thing is fascinating because there is so much information about it where so many people have had these experiences without even really knowing it or the ones and it, it comes off just like his. Right. And to where you're like, look, I've seen and you see one and then you see it because you could easily mistake one for anything. Right. You'd be like, OK, I guess it could be this or it could be that. But when you physically see it break into other orbs. And then those are under some sort of intelligent control that changes everything because you've everybody's seen random like you could throw a plastic boat in the river and watch it just flow randomly. Right. It's just what it's doing. It would be different if you threw a plastic boat in the river and it was remote control. And then you can tell that this thing is keeping up with the car. Yeah. Yeah. Figuring things out like that changes everything. Every everybody's real cool with everything as long as we're the smartest ones. But the minute that changes, you you get that real cold sweat feeling. When people claim that it's ball lightning, swamp gas, you get all these other you know crazy uh, theories on what it is. But the people that have actually seen them, they're like, dude, what I saw was not swamp gas. Yeah, they- I didn't see somehow the lighthouse reflecting <laughs> right? off of a cloud or fog or. You know, and these orbs are often seen where crop circles appear. Well, don't forget about the Marfa lights. And right. everybody talks about, oh, it was headlights. It was just like, no, nah, man, they were seeing these before cars. Brown mountain lights. Exactly. So why do certain areas see them all the time? There's one in Australia. I can't think of the name of it, but it's the same phenomenon. It's in this same area. People constantly see this strange light. Scott, will figure that out and send it to me. You know. Um, Which is the lights. Yeah. I don't remember. I know we've talked about yeah, it. Yeah, we've talked about it. I don't remember it. Yeah, so I don't Bonnaroo, know. Bonnaroo, isn't that in Australia now? The Bonnaroo party, that's where the lights come from? Isn't that it? Uh, well, that's, I've heard of Bonnaroo. I don't know if that's where the lights come from. but That's that, what I'm going to say. Sure, go with it. They come for you just dropping, you, you t- you're rolling, and then you, you find you some, some lights. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe I'm Pretty down. Lights has played a concert there. Hell yeah. Right? And yeah. Speaking of Pretty Lights, I know we've got, we still get them. Hate. Listen. Look, we get a lot of hate People for that. are mad that we stopped using Pretty Lights on the show. We're mad. The reason yeah. we stopped is because YouTube keeps taking our videos down, even though we have permission from Derek. <laughs> it's true. They're not accepting it. I've presented them the email ten times. Yeah, they don't. They care. don't care. But here's the thing: when it, when it is it even a human that's reading my email? No. If I could get a phone number and get it to Derek to call, but I don't even think that would help. Be like, Dude, yo, this is my music. <laughs> speaking of like AI, somebody just forwarded me a video of like an AI robot doing like jumping over don't, doing don't, parkour. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. oh god, we're all dead. Yeah, this that's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Look, while I was talking about Kentucky, I forgot that y'all had sent me this, and I think this is Tracy sent this. But anyhow, this is something they had found on Reddit, and I want to send you, or I want to tell you this because it's it's just funny that it ties into Kentucky. But this is strange. It says, "Who is this posted by?" Pactolus. It says, so I live in Kentucky in the city now, but we lived way out in the country when I was younger in a very old giant farmhouse. My family got it for cheap because it was falling apart and the basement would flood. And it had, you ready for this, a crawfish infestation because it was so old. The basement (laughs) floor was basically dirt and mud. That's pretty cool that you can raise mud bugs down on the bottom floor. Says, I was also abducted at this house twice, but that's a story for another day. Abducted by people? It doesn't say. It just says that's a story for another day. But listen to this. My dad and I would go on walks across the property to our neighbor's pond to fish 
because he allowed us free access. This neighbor also owned a herd of cattle. Well, one day we're walking there, and at the top of a very tall tree, had to be roughly 40 to 50 feet off the ground, there was a young calf simply impaled on one of the top branches. It had not been stormy for days, so it couldn't have been a freak tornado. Now, this was over 20 years ago, but I'll never forget it. It's one of those things that convinced me there's so much more to this world that we don't understand. Could have. 50 foot up. Now, it doesn't say the size of the calf. It's probably hard to tell. Right. I do not know a bird of prey in the state of Kentucky that would have the ability to lift a newborn calf off the ground and impale it on a limb in a tree. Could it be a large cat? Maybe you carried it up there because, you know, like jaguars and stuff or leopards will stash their kill in trees. But 50 foot up, they go to the first limb just to keep it away from other predators. There's no reason for a large cat to wedge its food in the trees if there's no predator to that large cat. Yeah, I'm just throwing out possible scenarios. (laughs) How crazy is that? Uh, It's very Remember now you did a story years ago about the fella that they found in top of the tree that was missing, had the boot off. Yeah, the whole thing. fellow's name it. was Todd Sees, I believe. You remember what I'm talking about, though? I do. Yeah. yeah. So I think of that. I'm like, well, what would they be doing? Is it another one of those like uh, cattle mutilations? And they just whoop and just toss this Tossed one out? it out. Maybe they did black helicopters. They just kicked it out. Or maybe they picked up the cow and the cow went into labor, gave birth while it was floating up. It fa- oh, that's a good theory. Dude, yeah. there's, <laughs> dude, there's all kinds of stuff, right? There's, but I just thought, I man, that how is the very was. interesting. I know myself, myself, yeah. Uh, scary stories. Now, earlier you were talking about Ouija boards. I don't, yeah, remember? Uh-uh. Yeah, and I'm, I do, I hate those things. I do too. Now, don't get me wrong. I think they look awesome. Yeah, they do look like cool. the look of them awesome. But I do not want one. Uh, Well, check this out. This comes from one of our listeners who happened to mess with one. It says, let me start off by saying that you guys hit all the right nostalgic notes. I enjoy your show to no end. Thanks. It brings me a pleasure. I only associate with those feelings of growing up around friends. Okay, down to the nitty gritty. I'm contacting you guys to see if either of you has ever heard of a person being haunted. Not possessed so much, more like the spirit, ghost, apparition, etc., has attached itself to that person. And yes, I'm referring to myself. I'll answer that question. Yes. And I've heard it multiple times, and I actually heard about one last week when uh, we were at dinner with some family. One of the family members had a... Uh, yeah, do uh, tell. Tell more. A new person in their life, and this person... I'll, I'll tell... I'll get into it next. I don't want to cut it all off. Okay. When I'll tell done. it next... I'll tell, I'll tell it next episode or whatnot. But yeah, it's something along the lines of something has attached itself to them and has been following around for quite some time. Crazy. It says, I never really believed in the supernatural growing up, even though I wanted to with every fiber of my being. It just seemed to me that the world we lived in was grounded in reality. I had a normal childhood, a happy one, and I was lucky in that fact. I never really got into trouble. I was kind of a shy kid. Then I turned 16 and got my driver's license. It was true freedom for me at the time. Cruising Main Street in Stigler, Oklahoma, I grew up just two miles north of Eufaula Dam. I just digress because at this time in my life, something happened I just buried. You see, my best friend Clint and I got our hands on a Ouija board. I don't even remember where from. One night, late, around midnight I think, we decided that we were going to use it. Where do I decide to use the thing, you might ask? Well, apparently the worst place you can use it. In a cemetery. It seemed to work. We, we talked to what claimed to be a Nazi SS soldier and my dad, who had passed a year before. We finished and went home that night and never really thought about it again. Now flash forward a year and my other best friend, Chad, and I were at my house and decided to get the old Ouija board out again and mess around with it. This time we used it at our house and our house was built into the side of a hill and the room we used was completely underground. Yeah, kind of like a basement. I know another stellar location, you see. Chad and Clint didn't know each other. They had never met each other. They went to different schools, 40 miles apart. Now, during the session, who should happen to show up but my Nazi SS officer? 
Both times he seemed rather nice and nothing too detrimental happened those two times. But this is when my luck started to change. Was he attached to me at this point? I didn't know. I thought, oh, man, I don't think so. Not yet. So fast forward a few more years. I'm recently out of the Marines and working as a reporter in a small town newspaper. My dreams had come true. The perfect life for me. That's when I met Katrina. I felt hard for her. Everything about her was great. She was different. It was with her that we got out the Ouija board again. This time, guess who? The Nazi was there again. But this time, he wasn't so cordial. As a matter of fact, he gave me some rather terrible news. He said I'd have a long life, but not a good one. But one of strife, depression, and distrust. I wish I had taken it more seriously. It's not like the movies. All the bad coming at you at once. No, man, it's a slow burn. One that has taken 20 plus years. My luck went downhill ever since. And the paranormal activity went up. To the point, I'm a true believer. I won't go into too many details, but everything from ghosts to UFOs to having power pole lights turn off and on for me every time I walk by them is starting to happen. Now, the spooky stuff I can deal with it makes life a bit more interesting, but it's the downward spiral of my luck I've had. The synchronicity at its worst. So bad and so unique bad luck that I truly believe that my guardian angel is a Nazi SS officer. My jobs have gotten worse to the point I haven't worked in years. There's drug use, too much of it, I admit, and I never used to try them before. I have almost no friends to speak of, and everywhere I go, whether it's at my friend's house or volunteering at the local Salvation Army, strange things happen. Strange noises, cold spots, objects moving. There's even been a few times where other people have witnessed it around me. These things I've seen would make a true believer out of most scientific proofed, proof minded person. I would like to go into more detail, but contacting you guys is a spur of the moment action at this point. There is so much and it's so complicated, it's going to take me a while to get it all down on paper. Finally, I know what most would think that I must have some type of mental illness. I actually thought this too, and still entertain the thought on some days. I truly don't believe that's the case, though. Um, sorry, this is all the time I have at the moment. You can contact me by email, blah, blah, blah. So he thinks, his name's Jason. Thank you, Jason. That one day when they were just messing around as kids, he contacted someone through the spirit board and, and it claims to, to be a Nazi SS soldier. And it's been following him around for years. Mm. And like he didn't touch it for years and then got it out again. And boop, he was right there again. The same spirit. Put it away, went another three or four years, met a girl, want to play with it. As soon as they get it out, boom, he's right there. And he warned him, and he said his life has been in turmoil slowly over the last 20 years. Is it screwing his life up is what he's wondering. Yeah, it is. And just to think that this negative entity can and attach it, it's itself. It's all fun and games to this entity, whatever it is. Yeah, it's causing his life to fall apart. He's talking about he can't find a job. He has no friends. He has drug use. Never did any of that stuff in the in the past. Well, and it also may not really be a Nazi soldier. It may be yeah. presenting itself that right. way just to really even mess with your mind even more. I agree. Um, yeah, this is something that, yeah, man, that's something that if you can find some spiritual cleansing place like the you – I would, I would go, I would seek out a like priest. Yeah. I would, uh, I would start delving. Blessings and, I would, and, I would start yeah. literally delving into things of spiritual cleansing. I would start looking into that route. Like I would change everything and start going, I need to start looking at, and people will laugh and people listen out there will laugh at it. But there's always, dude, if there's, if there's brightness, if there's light, if there's love, then there has to be darkness. The world, well, the, the whole universe I mean, works on balance. You just did an episode not too long ago about curses. Mm -hmm. And everybody knows the term like that family has a black cloud over them mm -hmm. or whatever. Are these, you know, the reason that these families have such trouble all the time is there is something attached to them that follows them around and makes bad stuff happen. Well, what was that old joke that they used to always say is that Job had finally had enough and he looked up at God and he said, why do you do this to me? And God said, something about you just pisses me off. Oh, wow. I never heard of that. Yeah. Would, and that's the way the that curses at? feel. That's the way the curses feel. It's like some people 
You dismiss it, though. Well, you know what it is. This is the way you, you look at it like this. There are certain people, and we know them, and we a lot of our listeners are empaths. You know, yeah, you and I always talk right. about, like, we don't know anything, right? Like, no. we're really – but a lot of our listeners are empaths and are tuned into that. Right. And so they really pick up on it. Well, imagine that you're tuned in, but you don't know it. So there has to be people that these things can easily attach to, right? No, so I agree. some people are more easily attached than others. Yes. So why – This is the very reason I don't want to go on these ghost tours yes. and stuff like that because I don't want – they always talk about stuff attaching and you bringing it home. Have you ever messed with a Ouija board? I have. Yeah, I was a kid. I did it one I time. Don't, I don't. I and as a nothing kid, really I, happened. I was gonna say nothing really happened. I thought I felt it move, but at the same time, I think my cousin was pushing it. And you, we are, we all think that, right? But I never and had any like. Thing. I didn't like it. It would answer like yes, no, but it, but it didn't go into detail like That's, I'm a yeah. Nazi SS soldier. That's me. Is I never had that. But just because you and I haven't had it doesn't mean that it's not out there happening to other people. Well, I agree. You know what I mean? I, so, I, I think if you're serious and you drew a pentagram on the floor. Oh, easy now. And you got some candles out and uh, you sacrificed a chicken and you, you spit rum at it and, you know, did all the stuff. Hey, bartender, Joe Boo needs a refill. You can probably, you know, you know what I'm talking about, like yeah. the mark for death, like the voodoo. Yeah. Um, I'm King betting, Willie. You could um, probably get some more power out of it. I would imagine that. I've just seen too many movies. It, I don't know. That stuff, though, freaks me out more than encountering feral people, more than encounter something that attaches itself to you because you have no say. It is truly yeah. like a soul parasite is what that right. thing is on. And it's feeding on your misery. And the only way to get rid of that is to start delving into some sort of not dark, but bright Light, love, some sort of spiritual cleansing. If you can find somebody to do that, do for real. Like I would start leaning that direction and see what happens. I would too. Um, this is exactly the, like we always talk about. Like if you're scared of Sasquatch, it's easy. Just don't go in the woods. Yeah. Like I don't like sharks, so I don't go to the ocean. Right. Real it's simple. Easy to avoid. You can't avoid that. No, that's what's terrifying when it comes to demons. And the one the I'm talking about is there's a uh, the person I was going to tell you the story about, and I will. I'll tell it next week. It's more like a hat man, more like a shadow man. So anytime the lights go off, there it is, just lingering and watching. Right. And, and I don't know, folks. It's it's pretty crazy, but um, yeah, yeah. Um, if you have any stories you'd like to share with me and Cam, hook us up. Do do not hesitate. You don't need to email the show asking if you want us to send it. We want you to send it. Email the show at expandedperspectives at yahoo.com. You can call the show 888-393-2783. That's 888-393-BRUD. You can follow us on all forms of social media. Don't forget to share the show with your friends and family. Write us a review. Yeah. Uh, subscribe on whatever podcatcher you want. Go over to YouTube. Subscribe to that channel, too. It helps us out. Yeah. And Make sure you like the videos. Even if you're not, let, just click the like button. And I'm listen, I mess stuff up all the time. So I'm not, this is by <laughs> no, no way joke. yelling at anybody because I screw stuff up all the time. And I refuse to read instructions. But I have noticed where some people will go on iTunes and they'll write a really nice review, but they forget to click the stars. So it'll be like a one star. So you think, oh man, this person hates us. And then, then it'll be really positive. You need to click on the stars, then write your review. Yeah. I want to take the time to thank everyone that reached out to me, has sent the show emails, who would messaged the show on Instagram and on Facebook and messaged me personally and all that. If I haven't got back and back with you, I will. I was overwhelmed. It really meant a lot to me and not just me, but to my wife as I was reading and telling her and she sat there. It really meant a lot to her. And it's it really is. It's helpful. It's a very helpful thing to know that all y'all are out there and, and it just feels good to know that, you know, even if you just took the time to write that, that little bit of time was thinking about us. And I really, I really do appreciate it more than I can ever, ever voice. Yeah. I, I experienced the same thing with my father. Um, it's like, it's so easy to kind of forget that so many people are listening yeah. until something bad happens and then everybody makes you feel better. And it's like, yeah. wow, this is really like a family. It did. It helped a lot. It helped a lot. At the time we needed it the most, just those little kind words, everything was great. So no bullshit. Kyle and I appreciate y'all as much or more than you appreciate us. I can guarantee you that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what do you got planned for your weekend? I'm getting my granddaughter. We get to keep the baby overnight. She's coming to stay with me Saturday. So me and the wife will have the grandbaby and she'll get to hang out. And I can't wait. It's I don't a three-day weekend. Do. I think yeah. it's Labor Day weekend. 
Yeah, I don't know. Are we going to play disc golf some this weekend, maybe? I, I, I don't know. I know that me and Luke, you know, I always talk about kung fu movies. Luke, he asked me to take him to a kung fu movie on Sunday. Oh. oh. We're going to go see uh, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. I cannot. Is that, when's it, is it out right now? I think so. Dude, yeah. I want to see that. Ba- I may have to go. So I'm going mean, cra- to crash your movie viewing party. Yeah, I mean, we're not, I'm just rent- gonna we're ask not him renting the go. theater out. You're welcome, too. I'm just going to ask Luke if I can go. He'll <laughs> tell me, <Luke>. yeah. <laughs> I don't have any idea what it's about, but I, I like, you know, Shaolin Temple, Shaolin Temple Strikes Back, The Legend of the Drunken Master. So keep going. You remember, I sent I mean, you I the YouTube wait. channel that it's nothing but the old Chinese Kung Fu movies. Yeah, man. I don't know what it is about that help. genre, but it's, it. it's amazing, right? I do. I love it. All right, folks. That's all the time we have. Be careful. Till next time. I'm Kyle. He's Cam. Peace, y'all.